video you will learn how to use application templates in Topric Composer to create your own applications, how to change the layout of these applications, how to edit, add or remove components, and how to get those components to talk to each other using events. I'm starting off with an empty Topric Composer project. I right click on the project name and select the new SDWP application based on template wizard. In this wizard I can select the starting point of my application, and here I'm selecting the default app, and I need to enter a new unique identifier for my application. Let's call it the family app. Once this has finished, it will take us directly into the definition of the new application using SWP. SWP is a server-side templating language similar to PHP or Java server pages, but it's optimized for Sparkle and RDF-based data. SWP's scripts basically consist of HTML tags plus SWP control elements plus custom SWP tags. When I scroll up a little bit, you can see a few HTML tags such as the title and script tags being used here, but you also see that it's possible to embed things like Sparkle expressions, here I'm using a function call, as well as custom tags such as SWA window, SWA class tree gadget. The application itself consists almost entirely of custom SWP tags and it illustrates that building SWA applications is basically like building something out of Lego blocks. You get a large collection of pre-existing components that you can plug together with different arrangements. So basically an SWA application consists of different gadgets that are arranged in a different layout and the gadgets are communicating with events. These concepts will be elaborated in this video. Just as an aside, when you're using Top Rate Composer 4.6 and you're not happy with this editor that you see here, if you need more space or if you feel you're missing out on, on features that you're familiar with from other editors, you can right-click into the text of the SWP definition and it will open up a standalone editor which you can then maximize. And this is basically a full HTML editor. You can make your changes and then you can save them back and they will be written back into the model. But for now I'm using the built-in editor of Top Rate Composer. So let's look into getting started and the layout of SWA applications. If you look at the general structure of this document, you see that there is a full screen border layout tag around almost everything else. This basically instructs the system that it should use a layout in which components can be placed into the west, east, south, north and center. And you can nest those layouts within each other so that you can have a nested border layout within the full screen border layout. For example, for the left hand side of the screen, which consists of two other gadgets, you can place a nested border layout with the class hierarchy in the center and the instances grid gadget in the south. Actually, for our application, we only need a single tree, so I'm removing this nested layout and I'm giving the window surrounding the, the tree a different ID. Let's call it family tree. And now the layout panel of this tree component will be the west of the whole application. And the title shall be parent-child hierarchy. So when I assign it, the system will automatically format the layout. So now we are actually in a position to start our application, to try it out. And the easiest way to try it out is actually launching the default application and then just making a small change to the URI. So I'm doing that now. I'm selecting the example data set that I want to display. In this case, this is the schema Kennedy's file. And I'm opening this with the default application, which takes me to this web browser 
and in this web browser I need to change the view class argument and instead of using the default app I tell it to use the family app and now you can already see it has switched to the new application because it is using the parent child title here instead of the class hierarchy but that's basically the, the main difference that we have made so far so we can minimize the browser because we'll need it later on for our incremental development I can also close the schema Kennedy's file because we are really just interested in the application itself so let's make some adjustments to make sure we are creating uh, a human uh, a user-friendly application here so let's call it the family application in the title of the browser and then we can also navigate into the application's header which is its own component basically we can move the mouse over this element here the application header and then control click into it and this takes us to the definition of what's showing in the top of the application this still says top right default application so let's make this the family application as well and we can use the back button to return where we have been we can delete a few more things that have been automatically copied from the default application including the argument and uh, the comments that we don't need so after we've done that we can again make sure that the changes have been accepted when we refresh the web browser we now see its family application here and also showing up here in the header in the title of the web browser as the next step for our application development we need to tell the system which ontology it should use because we want to create an application for the schema.org namespace displaying a hierarchy of schema person objects typically the best practice is to import the ontology into uh, the swp file in this case we are selecting the schema single range file and navigating back we can go back to our view so now we have all the definitions from the schema namespace as part of uh, our model and we can easily reuse the, the correct concepts and properties now let's talk about gadgets top rate composers swa library comes with a comprehensive list of gadgets that are pre-configured for typical use cases and you can see a description and interactive examples of those gadgets when you open up the SWP application component library help page as I've shown from top rate composers help menu looking at the table of contents you see it's explaining lots of different things it's explaining how to use forms search tree components how the event mechanism works and all of these things are explained using interactive examples so you can actually play with uh, the SWA, com SWA components described in the source code which is hopefully a good way of, of learning how these things work going back to our application you will see that each of those gadgets like the class tree gadget or the view form gadget or the form search gadget are placed inside of windows using the class SWA window and these windows basically create this black header that is on top of every component on the screen instead of using the class tree gadget we will change it to use another component called the generic tree gadget this is different from the class tree gadget in that it can display an arbitrary relationship between objects basically any object property can be used like the parent-child relationships and we can navigate using the control click trick we can navigate into the generic tree gadget to learn about the arguments that it takes in particular this element requires a resource type which is schema person and a property which is the relationship that we want to display so back in our generic tree gadget you can actually see the list of possible arguments when you go to an empty space within the tag and then press control space 
then you can uh, select the property you want to instantiate, in this case the resource type, and this shall be schema person. The next argument we need to fill in is the property, which is schema parent. And the parent relationships points from a child to its parent. We want the tree actually to go in the other direction. We want it to go from parent to children. So we say it should use this property in the inverse direction. So and another small modification that we want to make is for the search form to be always about persons. So instead of using arbitrary classes, we want this always to be the class person that people can search over. So these have been the main changes we wanted to make. Let's go back to the browser. Let's refresh the application. And you can now see it has picked up a different tree component, which is using the correct parent-child relationships that we wanted to display. We can still use this tree to navigate around. And the search form is also fully functional, so we can search either for all people or we can say let's find everyone who has a spouse and show me those spouses in a separate column. And then a click on any of those results also updates both the tree and the form in the middle. Which brings us to the last topic of this demonstration, which is about events. You may wonder how does the communication between all those gadgets work. If I, for example, click on some node here in the tree, how does the system know that it should update the form? And likewise, if I'm clicking on something here in, in the search results, how does it know that it should use that instance also in the form and the tree? And the answer is that each of those gadgets are able to publish and listen to events that are sent from others. So if I click on something here in the tree, the tree fires or publishes an event which has the selected resource as its payload. And then the form is programmed to react on this event and use the payload of the event to figure out which URI or which resource it needs to display. In terms of the source code in SWP, this is implemented through the arguments that you see here, like resource selected event and these are passed in basically using a shared vocabulary so as long as the names of all these events are the same all these components will understand each other that's why on the top of the application we have created a variable that is visible within all these children here we've given this a name instance selected event and some string identifier for the event and we are using this variable in all the components so that they use the shared name for all the events. So that's, that was it. I hope this was helpful for you in building new SWA applications. It shows how you can reuse existing gadgets. An advanced topic for later would be how to create your own gadgets. And you can look at the existing gadgets and clone them and, and see how they are implemented to do this. You may also want to check out more information such as the SWP help and documentation. Pointers will be included into the video. You can download a fully functional evaluation version of Top Rate Composer Maestro Edition from topquadrant.com and start developing applications that use SWA and a wide range of other application development tools. You can also learn more about how Top Quadrant products and solutions can turn your structured and unstructured information assets into a semantic ecosystem, the next step in data evolution.